I thought you must have closed up early for lunch. Well, sorry about that, Bing. I had to go and see someone. Oh, I wondered if you'd mind looking at this for me. The plug seems fine, but I think there's something wrong with the kettle connection. Yeah, right. Rachel brought it to my attention this morning. I was rash enough to promise to pay for repairs to all household appliances in the girls' tenancy agreement. Eh, uh, don't suppose there's any room at the bungalow for anyone else, is there, Bing? The bungalow? Why do you ask? I've just been to see some flea pit of a flat. Oh. You think you're leaving the clothes? Well, I've got no choice, have I? Mick's given me notice to quit. But I thought you and Mick could rent at number five on a joint basis. So did I. But since he was first past the post in the marriage stakes, I've got to make way for his intended. And a mother, by the sound of it. That's a bit thick. Couldn't he move in with his fiancée? Nope. He wants number five, so I'm out on my ear. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you know, sooner if there's anything I could do, I would. Yeah, I don't think there's anything anyone can do, Bing. I'll just have to start all over again. I suppose this is what you pay for. You don't have stained glass windows and chairs like this down at my local surgery. <laughs> hey, uh, you can get off to work if you want, you know. No, no, you're all right, I, uh, I don't want to stay and see what the consultant has to say. What did they say when you phoned them? Oh, they want a full week from me next week, otherwise I get the job. I'll be all right with Mick, love. You go to work. No, don't worry. I'll be fine. Mrs Charlton. Come on, Nick, Come on. Uh, right. Have you put a card in the trading post for a lodge, yes? I tried, but Belle Simpson said she isn't accepting cards anymore. Don't know what Dixon's got her working in there for him. She hasn't got a clue. She doesn't even stock any of them little bicky things or cracker likes anymore. Here we go. Oh. Everton mints, is it, Julia? Oh, have they come? Especially for you. Oh, thanks, love. Yeah. Are you feeling any better since you've been on them patches? What patches? HRT, hormone reinforcements to you. You are? You're taking hormones? Oh, nothing you'd know about. They don't understand a thing about the change, do they? The what change? You never said you'd been the docks. She didn't have to. I sorted her out with a few free samples myself. You what? Julia lent me some of her patches. Hang on. You're taking drugs off her. I understand what she's been going through. You wouldn't. Flame it out. You had enough to say about me, didn't you? And here you are, pushing hormones all round the neighbourhood. Hey, I gave her one free packet, that's all. And I didn't ask her for payment for them. She was just trying to help Jimmy. At least I care, Jimmy Corkhill. The life that you've led that poor girl. I'm surprised she didn't start to change your life 20 years ago. Do you know something? If you'd been born 200 years ago, they'd have burnt you at the stake. Why didn't you tell me you weren't well? I just didn't. Look, there's nothing wrong with me trying them. If there's no difference, then I'll go to the doctors. No way, Jack. You'll get to the docks and ask him first. Sorry, did you sell the echo here? No, no, I'm sorry, we don't do papers. Just that then. Love, those things could make you ten times worse. You haven't got a clue what's in them. In what? In HRT patches. I know. Horses pee. What? Uh, horses pee? Yeah, I've read about it. They have thousands of mares on these farms in Canada and they keep them pregnant all the time, you know, to get the hormones out of them. And then all the male foals they've got, they sell for dog meat. Isn't that horrible? Yeah, I see. You don't know what you're putting into yourself. Hey, it's supposed to give you the boost, though, isn't it? <laughs> and I can't see you complaining when she's waking you up in the middle of the night wanting a bit of you know what. <laughs> That's it, not bad. Well done. Hello, what's all this? Uh, Matthew's got a big hockey match this afternoon, so I'm just putting him through his paces. I didn't know you played hockey, Matthew. I've only just started. Actually, he's quite nervous. Uh, today's the day the games master picks the under 13 school side. What's that good? Oh, no, look, you just got to think positive. You only do your best, that's all I ask. I'm going to get ready. All right, son. All right, David. Uh, ah, excuse me. Max, have you got a minute? I wanted to have a word with you about Patricia. Patricia, why? What about her? Well, there's nothing to worry about. No, quite the contrary, as a matter of fact. Uh, it's just that, uh, as we two seem to have fallen out recently, I haven't had the chance to talk to you properly. And? Well, I wanted to thank you for the way that you've handled the divorce and so on. I 
I have spoken to Patricia on the phone a couple of times, and she's very grateful to you for not having put any obstacles in her path, so thank you for that. Well, um, thank you. Look, I know I said some pretty awful things about you and Susanna recently, but I was very worried about Patsy's future, and I'm sorry. And, uh, well, to be honest, I, I have rather missed you and the children. Is there any chance of forgetting the recent past and shaking hands? <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever admit it, David, but um, I've missed you too. Dad, look, I got my rabbit. Oh, now then, isn't he lovely? I think we've been to every pet shop in Liverpool. I never think all rabbits look the same. <laughs> well, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, isn't it, Emily? Hello, Susanna. Hello, David. He's got snowy stroke him, Dad. All right. Do you like him, Grandad Crosby? Oh, yes, he's very splendid, very uh, snowy looking. <laughs> <laughs> can I hold him? No, you're too rough. Put him on the brush then so we can see him properly. No, it's wet. They don't like wet. Well, I've got a hutch in the boot of the car. Oh, well, where shall we put his home, Em? Under the kitchen window? Can't live outside. It's too cold. The man in the shop said they don't like draft. Oh, well, um, I'd better get on with the picnic. What time's the kick-off? Bully off. Bully off. <laughs> Bully <laughs> off. Quarter to one. I thought it might be an idea if uh, David came along to join us, if you're free. Yes, free as a bird. It'd be great to cheer young Matthew on, if that's all right with Susanna. David and I have decided to um, bury the hatchet. Of course, David. I'd love you to come. Right, well, um, well, we'll see you... Uh, Surely, then, eh? Do you know, this operation isn't going to cost me a penny, after all. What? What do you mean? Well, apparently, all she has to pay for is today's visit, and the rest is on the NHS. So I'm not really going private at all, am I? No, nah, just a fully paid-up queue jumper. Oh, don't remind me. So what did the consultant say, exactly? Well, he examined her and looked at the X-rays, and he seems to think she should have the operation as soon as possible. Really? He says he should be able to fit me in before the end of next week. That's, that's brilliant. Yeah. So she's going to have lots of bed rest before the op and a few weeks after. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. No, Mum, come on. You've got to do what the doctor says and have lots of bed rest. The only worry is what to do about work. you better get yourself back in. You can't afford to get the sack now. Oh, I don't know what to do about it, Mick. I mean, especially since our cat is back at work again. Look, I don't want to interfere or anything, but what if you two and Tanya moved into my place for a couple of weeks? Look, Gladys needs someone to keep an eye on her. You need to get back to your job properly. So why don't I look after Gladys in my place? What about the shop? Jimmy and Lindsay can manage the shifts. They've been asking for more hours anyway, and I can do a few hours at night. Oh, that's very kind of you, Meg. And if it means Ari Lane can keep her job. Brilliant, and move his all in today. Hang on a minute, my mum hasn't agreed yet. Yes, I have, love. Well, yours is a four-star establishment, isn't it, Meg? One of the best, Glad. Listen, babe, why don't you get back to work? Leave everything to me. I'll sort it. I don't know why you're doing all this. I mean, you don't think of picnic, is there? You don't think my mum and dad are poses. Oh, come on, Matthew. We can have something hot and we're still in the touchline in the cold. I'll have to check on the kid. Mm, poor lad. He seems dead nervous, doesn't he? Mm, I think he is. You sure you don't mind keeping an eye on him while we're at the hockey? No, you go off and enjoy yourselves. Oh, thanks. Mm, right, I'm going to get myself ready. Oh, right. Uh, that'll be David. Oh, hello, then. Uh, sorry to bother you. Uh, do you think I can have a word with Julia? Ah, sure, I'll do. I'm awful sorry about this, Mrs. Farnham. What are you doing following me to work? All right, I've a quick word. Oh, of course. Go ahead. I was wondering, love, if you could let me have a few quid. I was going to ask you last night. Is it for the decorating? Uh, no. Um, all I need is about four quid. Uh, just enough for the pint and me pool's money. Well, if I cut out the pint, then just a couple of quid for the coupon. Oh, don't be daft. Did you save a pint for all the hard work you're putting into that house? Uh, sorry to bother you. Ah, thanks, love. I'm sorry about that. Does he often borrow money from you? 
Well, he's no way he's coming in, has he? Not since Terry did his disappearing act. And nobody's heard from him? Oh, poor Jack's worried sick about him. He didn't leave a forwarding address. Well, him and Terry weren't on very good terms when they left, and what with his mother, and then all that business about Henry Fraser. Well, all what business? Oh, um, it was nothing, you know. It was just that they had a fallout, that's all. I thought all this bigamy thing had blown over. I mean, Jack's wife is going to give him a divorce, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, she is. So, have you set the date? No. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Fan, <laughs> nothing's turned out the way that I thought it should. Oh, <laughs> come on, Julia. Don't get so down in the dumps. Once Jack's divorce comes through, you both be free to marry. There's nothing else standing in the way, is there? You can turn right back round and get out. I don't even want to know what I'm here for. No, I had enough old book off you the other day. Now go on, up it. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. But I'm a customer today, aren't I? I want to sell this lot. A sandwich toaster, a clock radio, and two air dryers. All in good nick. Yeah, and why are you selling them, then? It's my mum's birthday. I want to buy her presents, so I'm saving up. Go on, how much will you give us? I didn't say I was buying. 20 quid for the lot. 20 quid? How much did they cost you? Uh, I can't think now. Yeah, but they do belong to you. OK, 15 quid. They're definitely worth that. So, so if they're not yours, whose are they? My mum and brothers. So they're not yours to sell, then? But they've been them. And look, they've hardly been used. Well, if they've hardly been used, how come they've been them? No. I don't buy knock-off gear in here, lad. Now, go on, get out. Take your power range, you They're not knock -off. Just get out, will Honest? you? Honest? Shut the crap, anyway. Go on, get out. Before I tell the busies you've been in here trying to sell me knock-off gear. Fuck it. Go on, beat it. Hey, what's going on? That little scally trying to sell me knock-off gear. I wasn't. Yes, you were. And just stay away. <sighs> well, is it knock-off or what? What do you think? Oh, Tim. What are you playing at, eh? Trying to flog Ben Gear? I needed to run this bike. And it needs a new tyre. Well, why don't you try getting yourself a job? I've tried. Honest. But no one will even give me a chance. Are you sure you can't get me delivering pizzas for you? Jimmy! What's going on? Why did Simba throw him out the shop? He thought he was selling stolen stuff. It's all right, I know him. He comes in the youthy, don't you, kid? I was just trying to put him right, that's all. Oh, <laughs> Beth. Go ahead, Jimmy. Take us on. Take him on what? He just wants to deliver a few pizzas on his bike. <laughs> Dream on, lad. You let me do it last week. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I was a bit pushed, OK? Go on, lad, go in. I'm talking to Jimmy. Not anymore, you nos. Go on, do one. See you, Jim. See you, son. What are you thinking of, eh, letting him do deliveries? Are you totally stupid? What if Mick Johnson finds out? You could be out on your ear. Do you know that Leo was nearly killed on that bike the other day? Jackie, the lad has got nothing going for him. I feel sorry for him, OK? Ah, and you felt sorry for that smackhead Macca too, didn't you? And what happened then, eh? You were in the cop shop all night, weren't you? And you hung on to your job by the skin of your teeth. No, Jimmy. You stick to your do good and down at the youth centre and the drop-in place. I am not having it screwing up my life! Watch out, Matthew! Concentrate! Matthew, don't let it in! Oh, you're putting him off! I'm not. He just wasn't fast enough, that's oh, all. don't shout at him. Oh, it's a lot faster than the hockey I used to play at school. Much faster. Steve, the commie chef, uh, used to play a lot of hockey, you know? Did he? Yeah. Tell he had his vasectomy. Apparently, they stitched him up all wrong. Oh, it's a cutting of two tiny tubes, Max, for heaven's sake. Look, darling, no surgery is without risk, is it? Spread yourself, Matthew! Come off your line! Well, just go and get it done, Max. Don't dwell on it. And don't put Matthew off. Matt! <laughs> Cover! Yes! yes! 
<laughs> Did you see that? That changed of direction. Brilliant. Are you staying out there with your rabbit, love? Yeah. Do you know, I nearly let the cat out of the bag with Mrs. Farnham. What'd you say? Oh, I don't think she was suspicious, but, oh, God, Jack, what are we going to do? It keeps preying on my mind. What if your Terry tells the police about Henry Fraser? He wouldn't do that. I know he wouldn't. Oh, but he was mad about you for lying about his mother. Oh, yeah, but to drop me in it for murder. Shh! Oh, and then there's Terry's mum. What if she tells someone? Oh, God, Jack, there's far too many people who know. And if you get arrested, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, love. Don't go upsetting yourself. Oh, Jack, I'm scared stiff. We've got to find your Terry and talk to him and find out what his plans are. OK. I'll start making a few inquiries. Track down his mates. See if they know where he is. All right. <laughs> Leo? It's me. What's all this lot doing here? Hang on a minute, send him up here. Uh, look, I'm really sorry, mate, but I'm going to need your room. Gladys, Elaine and Tanya are moving in, and I did warn you, didn't I? I don't believe this. You've moved them in already. What are you playing at, Mick? I'm really sorry, Sim, but I had to do it. Look, Elaine's going to lose her job if she doesn't show her face in work. Gladys needs someone here to keep an eye on her. We have no choice. I won't be for long, mate, I promise you. Look, Gladys has her operation next week. So we thought that you could sleep on the couch, you know, till she gets back on her feet. It'll only be for a few weeks. You're a case, you. Couldn't you ask me first? It was on the spare of the moment, thing, that's all. Oh, I so see. In other words, you couldn't care less about me. I'm just a lodger in me own home. Look, Sin, it's not like that, honest. Don't make, you can sleep on the couch for as long as you want. No. Don't give me all that crap, Mick. Let's face it, now that you've got a lane and a family here, you couldn't give a toss about me. What have you been saying to that Cassie Charlton? What? Did you tell us to write this letter to the newspaper? What letter? This letter, Jackie. Cruelty of coroner's rules to murder family. It's got our names in it and everything. And our jimmies. I've got nothing to do with this. Yeah, you've seen me letter, then? Too flaming, mate. We've seen your letter. What right have you got to tell the papers our business? All right, Jimmy, that's enough. Look, I just uh, felt sorry for you not being able to bury your son. I thought people should be told. Yeah, but it's our concern. Nobody else's. Do you know how depressed she's been over this? I wanted to get over what happened, not have it raked over again, and especially not in the bloody newspapers. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't realise. Well, I'm glad it's been printed. I think people should know. You are? I think it's very good of Cassie to go to all this trouble for us. He's been too protective, love. Jackie, I worry about you, don't I? I know you do, Jim. Go back to work. Oh, look, if I'd have known it was going to cause any upset, Jackie, I... Don't worry about it. I think it's a good letter. And it's exactly how I feel. Thanks. I'm thinking of redecorating this place. I can do it next week when Glad's in the Aussie. Oh, there's no need for that. Yeah, yeah, I want her to come and stay whenever she likes. Oh. Don't mind me, just get me jacket. Sam, I'm going to put some tea on. Do you fancy some? No, you're all right. I'll get something from the chippy. Come on, stay enough some with us. I don't want anything, all right? All right, look, uh, I'll put the spare quilt on the couch here. Be ready by the time you come back. No, you're all right. I won't be coming back here later. I've sorted something else out. Oh, yeah. Sin! He is upset about this, isn't he? Oh, it'll be all right. Well, it won't be for long, will it? Your mum will be on her feet and back in her house in about a month, so... he'll manage. Uh, hello, Julia. Oh, hiya. Hello. <laughs> oh, did you win? Oh, well. Oh. Tell Julia your news. I've been picked for the other 30s. Oh. We've been playing next week in the quarterfinals of the Cheshire and Lancashire Hockey Cup. Oh, well done. <laughs> oh, a 
Oh, you must both be very proud of him. Oh. <laughs> Where's Emily? Uh, she's playing in a room. Oh, come on, let's go up and tell her. Hmm? Oh. And thanks for staying on, Julia. <laughs> oh, she's been as good as gold. <laughs> I'll see you out. Say goodbye, Matthew. Hi. Oh, God, he love you. <laughs> 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 To myself, didn't I? Over that Cassie one. Of course you care. Oh, I hate it, you know. Thinking about saw Jimmy lying in some freezer cabinet in the mortuary. I mean, it's been 12 weeks, Jimmy. If I could just give him a proper funeral, I know I'd feel so much better. But what are we going to do, eh? I don't know, love. Not a lot we can do, is there? Cassie said in the letters, race. I can't grieve for him properly, can I? I just want to say goodbye to him, do I? I know, I know, love, I know. I wish I could do something, but I don't know what. I'm going to write a million letters to the bankers. <laughs> but no one's interested in what happened to our Jimmy. No one cares about what we're suffering now. I'm sorry, love. I wish I could do something to help, but I can't. <laughs> I just can't. Mum's sleeping like a baby up there, if the snores are anything to go by. That snoring keeps me awake tonight. There's going to be murder tomorrow. Age, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you reckon Sinbad will come back tonight? Nah, you heard him. He sorted something out. And you believed him? Sounded dead upset to me. Nah, you don't know Sinbad like I do. I mean, right now he's probably tucked up in some king-sized bed with a lecky blanket and a mug of cocoa. That's a survivor, Sinbad. He'll sort himself, no problem. Issue 2 of the Brookside magazine is now in the shops, priced at £2.50. Travel with Four next, first to the spicy, startling beauty of Marrakesh. Then join Paul Gambaccini on a day trip to the cooler grandeur of Warsaw. Sandy, you there? Oh, I can't keep up with all these bills. A final reminder from the painters. I could kill Teddy for this. Have you not heard from him yet? Not a word. He's dropped his right, hasn't he? It's 
sorry, Jack. Your dad dropped this off last night. It's for the food rail at the trading post. Hundred and eight pounds! What a rip-off! Oh, you get out the offer safe for us. Maybe Dad'll give you a discount seeing as it's in the family. Are you joking, aren't you? Family or not, my dad's as tight as a duck's backside. Oh, it's in. Good morning. What? Are you kids here? Yeah, well, better than being under everyone's feet back at the house, isn't it? I'm saying you weren't under anybody's feet. Oh, I was. Come on, Mick. Look, you wanted me out? I've moved out. I said you could sleep on the couch for as long as you want. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, look, son, you know how much you're laying on a family mean to me. I had to help them out. Yeah, I know, but it doesn't make it any easier for me, does it? When you're all right, I've already been to see a flat. Flat? Why don't you go for a house? You've still got the money from seller number 10, haven't you? <sighs> yeah, but half of that went on setting this place up, didn't it? Running the van, running two women last summer. Now, if I don't find cheap rented accommodation, I'm going to have nothing left to pass on to my own daughter. Well, come back, son. I know it's only a couch, but... No, you get on with it, Mick. I'll be all right. Money's here, Jack. All right, thanks. And this has just come through on the fax. Oh, who's it from? I don't know, it's from Mr Bradley. All right, let's have a look. Should you be reading it? Yeah, why not? Private. God, it's from Terry. Well, on his behalf. Where is he? It's from some attorneys in America. Tampa in Florida. He must have gone to stay with Barry Grant. You've got to go and ring Mr Bradley. Mr Bradley can wait another ten minutes. I want to read this. What did I say? Oh, go on, give us a chance. Oh, knocking off early, are we? You're hardly in that shop these days. A lot of things to do, Julia. Too busy doing me Florence Nightingale, you know. Ah, the children, Polly? No, 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 they're fine. They're... I've got my girlfriend's family staying with us. Her mum's going to be having an operation on her hip next week. So she's living at ours till she's back on her feet again. Uh, one of them hip emplacements, is it? <laughs> yes, yeah, something like that. We could do with a few more senior citizens living round here. Oh, she's not a senior citizen, Julia. She's just got a dicky hip, that's all. Oh, so how long will it be before she's fit and able again? It's difficult to see. A couple of months, maybe. Oh, that's good, because we need some new members of the O55 Club. I'll nip round later, because I can nominate her for membership. Um, she's not feeling too good, you know, Julia. Oh, well, she needs a visitor then, doesn't she? That'll cheer her up, won't it? Here. One coffee on the house. Cheers. I don't know why she hasn't been kicked out of that flat. Well, why should she be? Lad's not dossing there, is he, eh? She's still paying her rent. I could do with getting my hands on it. Well, I thought you were well settled. I wasn't your boss told you. I always moved a lane and a family in. I had to keep in the shop last night. You what? Mick's chucked you out, like? Well, not quite. He did offer me the couch. Yes. I don't, I don't blame him, really. It's just that I feel a bit badly done to. Oh, look, what I said the other day, you know, it still stands. Come and live in the extension, it's the least I can do. Oh, well, Jimmy, I've told you. I mean, I sold it to you to get rid of it. Oh, Simbad, it's been redecorated. You wouldn't recognise the place. No, no thanks, Jimmy. I'd rather keep in the shop than that extension of yours. Well, if you change your mind, the offer's still there. Can we ring these Yankee solicitors and get them to fact us more details? The deal seems like it goes to me in principle and all that, but I'd like to know the full score. Look, I'll call in and see you on my way home and uh, see what's what. Cheers, Frank. See you later. Is he phoning Terry? Shh. I'm dying to know what's going on. Well, everything's been set in motion. My solicitor seems well chuffed with that offer from our absent friend. So, what exactly is happening? Is Terry selling the shops and that to you? Better than that, love. He's giving them to me. For free? He can't pay the bills for all the building work it did, not to mention everything else. So in return for the club, shops and flats, I settle all his outstanding bills and he signs everything over to me. Nice and neat, eh? Well, what about the house? Well, the one in Brookside Close? Yeah. Uh, I tell you, can keep hold of that. I'm not bothered if I never see that grotty little close again. Yeah, but where do I stand? I've got money invested in this place too, remember? And I've been running it on my own for the past fortnight. Well, I mean, nothing changes for you, love. It's all status quo. And I'll tell you what, you're the only lady partner I've ever had. In business, I mean. Oh, so you're just keeping me for the novelty value, are you? Believe me, Jackie, I'm impressed with what you and your little team are doing here. I mean, it's not exactly my kind of scene, but... What if I bumped up my investment and I made it more an equal partnership? 
Well, I think that might be a bit more than you can run to, love. Oh, yeah? Well, what if I put in another 25,000? Jack. A young girl like you? Where are you going to find that kind of cash? I can get it. So what do you think? Well, if that's the way you want to go, it's a lot of money. Well, I'll take the risk. Oh, Jackie, are you sure about this? 25k in, and we're equal partners in Barbrookie. Agreed? Agreed. Have you ever had an operation, Mick? Um, I had my appendix out when I was about 10. I can hardly remember it, though. I've never even been in hospital. You read all these things in the papers. People dying on the operating table. Come on, Brad, don't be thinking like that. You've got the top man on the job. And these days, it's just a routine operation. A specialist told you that. I want you to promise me, if anything does go wrong, that you'll look after our Elaine and Tanya. Nothing's gonna go wrong. Promise me. All right, I promise you. Now, stop being so soft. Passes me back, love. Yeah. There'll be some money for our Elaine if I go. Not enough to last a lifetime, but it'll help. Elaine doesn't want your money, Brad. I don't care. She's getting it. This is my will. I want you to witness it. It's all handwritten. So, you can still read it. Yeah, but shouldn't you see a solicitor about this? I don't want to be spending half my life savings lying in some lawyer's pocket. It's dead straightforward. Everything goes to our Cassie and Elaine. All I need is a couple of witnesses. Hi, love. So, where's our new neighbour, then? Gladys, this is Julia Brogan. She's the cleaner next door but one. Housekeeper. Hiya. And, uh, Julia, this is Gladys Charlton. That's Elaine's man. Oh, I'm very pleased to meet you. Rick's been telling me all about your operation. Arthritis, is it? That's right. Oh, I've never been bothered with that. For self touch wood. <laughs> Are you putting the kettle on, Mick? It wants sugar for me, please. So, where is it you come from, then? Mm. Georgia? Hi. You're not going to work? No, no, I took a day off. I'm looking for Terry Sullivan. You haven't seen him around, have you? No, why? Well, he owes me some money for the work I did in the cafe bar and no-one seems to know where he is. Well, why don't you give it to Jackie? Well, she's just the office girl. I need to get paid as soon as possible. I mean, the materials alone cost me quite a bit. Hi. Hi. Remember this afternoon, both of you, won't you? Yeah, OK. Yeah, you don't need to keep reminding us, Mum. We'll be there. Well, it is for your own good. <laughs> well, that's debatable. I just don't like the idea of being interrogated by some do-gooder about something that's happened in the past. I mean, something about which I don't even feel guilty. Yes, well, that's the problem. You should feel guilty. Mum, people have committed worse crimes. Mum, come on, we haven't hurt anyone. Oh, haven't you? Just make sure you're both there. Well, let's just stay calm, all right, and just go through the motions, OK? Keep Mum quiet, eh? Yeah. You were out all day. Oh, well, the air sales were postponed. It's a pain going to Manchester and then having them put off. Is Christian around? No, it's his day off. Why did you arrange to meet him? Oh, no, no. Are you two going to get back together? Well, I haven't really seen him since he started here, but we have arranged to go up next week. Nice to have a chat and catch up on all the gossip. Yeah. So, what's happened with rehearsals? Oh, not much. They're only demolishing the building we've been using tomorrow. It's full of Irish fellas with big hammers telling us to push off. <laughs> Should ask Jackie see if you can use the old club room upstairs. Well, she can't give us permission, can she? She can now. Yeah. I can't believe it, but Jackie offered JC 25 grand for a cut in this place. 25 grand? Where did she get that? I don't know, but it's official. Well, she didn't have many problems raising money to buy an house, did she? Anyway, Jackie and JC Bradley, the new owners of the club. Terry's gone to America. I can't believe it, so Jackie's your boss now. Yeah, she's really going for it, isn't she? What's she like? She'll be going up with Donald Trump next. Hi. Is Terry Sullivan here? No, he's in America. Can Jackie help? Uh, no, not really. It's a business matter. Well, that's OK, cos Jackie's a boss now. Oh, well, yeah. let's speak to Jackie, then. I think she's in the office. I'll be back in a minute. You'd lend me money to buy into the rest of the praise. I haven't got the time to be hands-on here, so you can do all the day-to-day -day stuff, get your name above the door and everything. What? So I'll be the licensee? So long as your application goes through, OK? Um, Jackie, someone to see you. What do you want? Just wanted to drop this off for Terry, my bill for the design. How much is it for? I don't think that's any of your business. Oh, it is now, little Miss Hardfaced. I'm the new owner. Terry Sullivan sold this place to me and Jackie. Well, perhaps you'd like to pay me then. You can't do that. If you won't pay, you'll have to drag me through the courts. 
Oh, it'd be nice going public with all the mucky details about you and your pervert brother. Oh, more at it. You've got 28 days to quit that flat upstairs. I don't provide homes for people like you. She was working in the laundry on the corner of Ross Common Street. Oh, I remember that place, Charlie Chung's. Charlie Chung's it was. Oh, do you know what? I wouldn't have thought you'd be old enough to remember him. Well, I am in my 50s, you know. Oh, do you know what? I haven't thought about that Charlie one in years. Mm. A little Chinese fella, mm. and he always wore a bowl hat. Mm. Now, if Mr Tarleton from the Over 55s Club was here, he could tell you loads more about that oh. neighbourhood. He's got a beautiful set of old photos. Mm. Oh, wait, that's where I've come over here, actually, to uh, sign you up for membership for our club. Oh, I don't know if I'll be going to any clubs for a while. Uh, go on, Glad. Something to look forward to. Of course it will. Now, if you just fill in all your details and nominate you for membership. I'll tell you what. I'll sign this if you sign something for me. You sign it first and then pass it to me. What is it, though? My will. Your last will and testament. Are you sure? I just want to get it sorted, so if you don't mind... Oh, do you know, this is one of my big ambitions. I've been a bride, I've been the mother of the bride, I've been a godmother, and now this. <laughs> do you know, all I've got to do now is scatter someone's ashes and see, and I've done the lot! <laughs> oh, eh, I haven't brought me reading glasses. What am I going to do? Me big chance to sign someone's will, and I can't even see it. That's all right, love. You can have a lend of mine. Are you sure about this, Glenn? As sure as I'll ever be. Enjoy them. Bye-bye. Well, I will never understand people paying so much money for a few sausages. You should try them. They're really good. How many did she buy? Three pounds of them. She tried them in your daughter's cafe bar and Rachel told her where to get them. Well, I never thought I'd be saying this, love, but you're doing a really good job here. So, has Jackie been round for her order yet? I was just going to phone her. What? Yeah. Talk of the devil. Um, Jackie sent me the money for the order the other day. £108, right? That'll do very nicely. Thank you, Rachel. Right, so what can I do for you? We've got more of those sausages if you'd like them. Um, it's OK. Jackie doesn't need anything today. Hey, hold on, love. Some of this stuff has a very short shelf life, you know. She can't go chopping and changing like this. Well, she said thanks for helping her out, but she's going to get stuff from a supplier that she's found in town. It's a bit cheaper. Right, I'll have to get back. See ya. Oh, that's brilliant, that, isn't it? Tell me, how much did you spend on all that fancy stuff on the off chance our Jackie would be round? £700. £700? On a few sausages and a bit of mouldy old cheese? Does make sense. No, Belle, it did make sense. 700 out, 108 in. Now, that is really good business, that, isn't it? Well, perhaps we could freeze some of it. I don't believe it. It's not just you trying to bankrupt me. My own daughter's at it now and all. I think we can ditch Terry's plans for the club space upstairs and start afresh, don't you? Yeah, that's fine by me. Yeah, we won't rush into anything, but... I want you to put your thinking cap on and suss out what you think will bring the young ones in. All right? Yeah, great. And then we'll get him some decent designers and architects, and uh, that doesn't include that Georgia Simpson, either. Yeah, and I'll drink to that. Right, well, I'll be in touch about all the legal stuff, and, uh, Well, in the meantime, I'll let you get on with the job. OK, thanks, Mr Bradley. I think we can cut out the formalities, eh? <laughs> I mean, how about John or JC? That's what everybody else calls me, amongst other things. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. Have you heard the news? Oh, yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? Made up for you. So you'll be a millionaire yet, eh? <laughs> what can we do for you, love? Well, I wanted to ask if you let us use the old club upstairs for rehearsals. All of the place has been demolished and we've got nowhere to go. That's Jackie. She's in charge. Well, it's going to be a while before we do anything up there, so I suppose so, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Jack. I'll just go and ring Duncan. Oh, well, just a minute. We haven't discussed money yet. What? You, you want paying? Well, this is a business, Casey. Yeah, I know, but we're mates. Yeah, I know, but I've still got to run this place at a profit. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. 40 quid a week and I'll throw in free coffees. Well, I'll have to check if that's OK with Duncan. Well, I'm in no rush, so just let me know if you want it. Yeah, all right, see ya. <laughs> Very good, love. I couldn't have handled that better myself. <laughs> uh, Simba wants to worry, Mr Bradley. 
All right, mate. Uh, right, yeah. Listen, uh, I just wondered if you had any flats going. You know, I'm in need of a place in a hurry. And uh, well, with Terry going, like, uh, I wondered if his old fellow was going to be sticking around, you know? Well, look, put it this way, mate. There's nothing going at the moment. But um, if I've got anything to do with it, that Georgie Simpson won't be living up there much longer. Oh, yeah. So anyway, look, I'll have to go. All right, Trap. All right, I'll see you. Yeah, yeah, so, thanks for the Cheers, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Is he going to throw Georgie Simpson out? Yeah, second best bit of news I've had today. Jackie? Listen, Simbad, we'll be in touch. It'll probably be in a couple of weeks, all right? Yeah. Cheers, Jack. I'll see you later. See ya. What the hell are you playing at? What are you doing buying your stuff from some cowboy in town? What? Why did you string me along like that? Listen, I've bought in all kinds of stock especially for you, and now I'm lumber with loads of stuff I can't sell. Hang on, Dad. I can go to any suppliers I like, you know. I didn't make any promises. You and that Bell Simpson have just been taking too much for granted. Oh, yeah. And what happened to keeping it in the family, eh? Scratching each other's back? Look, I'm sorry, Dad, but I can't afford your prices. I've got to run this place at a profit, especially now that me and JC Bradley are joint owners. You what? Well, I'm bumping up my investment by another 25,000. Are you crackers? What about the house you were going to buy? Well, I don't need a house. 25 grand? I don't believe it. Anyway, the bank wouldn't lend you that kind of money, would they? Yeah, they will, no problem. And there's more if I want it. Jackie, love, I thought you were going to settle down. And what do you know about the club scene? Well, I'm learning, aren't I? Oh, yeah. And what happens when you come up against the gangsters and the drug dealers and all the other scum they attract? Yeah, well, I'll learn about that too. Jackie, love, you're going in far too deep. Pull out now, love, and concentrate on running your salon. No. Please, love, before you get sucked in, Dad, I want to make something of myself. You've already made something of yourself. You've got a nice little business. All you need now is a house. Oh, and a couple of kids. Well, yeah, yeah, if the right fella comes along. No, Dad, I'm doing what I want to do. I'm sorry, but I'm not here to make your dream of smiley, happy grandchildren come true. <coughs> Hold on. Hello, Bob Rookie. Yeah, Jackie Dixon. Dad, can you shut the door? This is private. Okay. All right, mate. Heard the latest about Terry? Yeah, Rachel filmed it. I don't know. Jackie Dixon's a right jammy little cow, isn't she? Half shared in that place. And what's Tez up to in the Sunshine State, hmm? Probably back with Granty. No doubt ripping someone off good style. So with your gob? Well, I still haven't found anywhere to live. No luck? No. That's why I'm here. I've come to set you up on your offer. Nice one, kid. They are only you'd see sense in the end. When do you want to move in? How about tonight? It'll only be for a couple of weeks. JC Bradley's going to help her, what's her name, Georgia Simpson out from upstairs. So I'll be able to move in soon she's gone out. Good one. Yeah. So if you don't mind, I'll bring my stuff around the savvy. Yeah, I'll get on the blower. Tell Jackie to make up the spare bed. I was thinking 50 quid a week. How's that grab you, kid? What? You want me to pay? Well, yeah. I mean, meals and your washing would be included, like. I don't believe it. Have you forgotten you still owe me 1200 buff for your little holiday in France? Well, no, but... Well, you can start paying that off by giving me my 50 quid lodgings for free. Listen, I can't do that. I mean, I haven't told Jackie I borrowed that cash off you. It's your problem, Jimmy. Um, go get me stuff, shall I? So, Georgia. Why did you decide to tell your parents about you and Nat? I did it because of Dan. The accident and everything. So if Danny hadn't discovered you, would you have continued sleeping with Nat? Well, that's hypothetical. I don't know. You don't want to talk about it? Got it in one. No. Is that because you feel ashamed and guilty about what you did? No! So you don't feel any guilt at all? No! Well, yes, of course I do. I hate what it's done to the family. Oh, God, why did you get us in? Look, Georgia, I know this is hard, but... Look, I regret what's happened, but I don't feel guilty. Well, you should feel ashamed. See? See, this is why she's doing this. She just wants to punish me. Come on, she's got a point. Is that how you feel, Matt? That your mother wants to punish you? Look, this is about these two. This is not about me. I just can't understand why you don't feel ashamed. What you've been doing is Oh, just... this is ridiculous. I thought we were coming here to be honest with each other. Apparently not. Georgia. Look, 
Stick it out, right? Just say what you think. Are you just going to let them sit there holding hands like that? Does it offend you? Yes, it does offend me. Have we all forgotten why we're actually here? Just leave it, Belle. Am I the only person in this room who finds that objectionable? Hiya, love. Are you busy? Not too bad. Wait, you'll never guess what I've done today. Yep. I've just witnessed someone's will. Me, after all these years. Do you know, I've always wanted to do that. Have you? Here you are, love. I'll give you a hand. Um, what are you doing, Julia? I'm just doing my little bit. After all, my uh, fiancé's got an interest in this place through his son, Terry, even though he's not around. Um, well, I'm afraid his Terry isn't coming back. Now, he's gone to America and he's passed this place on to me and JC Bradley. We're the new owners. <laughs> I don't believe you. It's true, Julia. What, what's his dad going to say? Him just nipping off to America like that? He's supposed to be his best man. Oh, and that's another thing. You and your fiancé better hurry up and get married, cos, um, me and JC don't want any tenants in those flats, especially tenants who aren't paying any rent. So I'm afraid your Jack's gonna have to be out in the next 14 days. There's a lesson on its way. It was after we moved to Formby from Brighton. Well, I was being bullied at my new school, and George was the only one I could talk to. You and Mum were just concerned with work and making new friends. <laughs> It's not true. I was a very good mother. We both were good parents. I was really upset when Grandad died. And the pair of you, you didn't seem to care about how it affected us. Why didn't you just talk to us? Because after a while, our, our relationship, our secret, it made us feel secure. Well, we're supposed to be telling the truth, aren't we? I mean, that's why we're here. Go on, now. We felt isolated, didn't we? Had either of you had any sexual experience before this first time together? No. Georgia? Why do you want to know? It might help. So I suppose you're going to tell me that my dad abused me now? Georgia? Oh, please. Is there something going on here that I don't know about? Of course not. Georgia. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I've read about these things, well, little girls and their daddies. Well, why not? You've had plenty of opportunity. When we were in Brighton, Saturday mornings, we'd have them all in the bed with us when they were little. And, and, and I'd get the tea and toast, and then I'd go off to work, and he, he'd go and play cricket or rugby, and you, you would be left alone in the bed Mom, with Georgia. Mum, stop this! Well, why should I? Because it's true. Well, is that how it all started? Is it? Is it you playing about with our little girl on a Saturday morning? you mean by that? I don't know. I, I'm just up to here with it all. Oh, you're up to here. And how the hell do you think I feel? Where are you going now? Oh, isn't it obvious? I'm storming off in high dudgeon. Or is that the sole preserve of the non-child molesting members of this family? That's a like Burton and Taylor in there. Haven't you got anything better to do? Shh. It's all gone quiet now. Nosy guess. 
What'd you say, love? I said, don't be so nosy. Hey, just taking an interest, that's all. Get off, Jimmy, you're freezing. Yeah, well, you have to warm me up then, won't you? No, I see. All the people's misery turns on, does it? No, but lying in me pit, mmm, with me gorgeous wife does. <laughs> Pass it like that, I could be shacked up with Omar Sharif. Oh, yeah. Well, here you are, then. Meet Dr Zhivago. Put us away, Jimmy. What's up? Oh, nothing. I just not in the mood for you and your morning glory. That's all. <sighs> so much for Julia's flaming patches. It's not her fault. <sighs> Listen, she was the one who said all this HRT lock could turn you into Wonder Woman. <sighs> Settle for Super Gran at the moment. You are. <sighs> well, aren't they getting you going? According to that Cassie one, the only place I'll be going is the barbers for a shave and brush up. Hey. Well, she reckons I'll be sprouting and muzzy with all them hormones. She doesn't, does she? Yeah. You won't feel so randy waking up to Noel Edmonds every morning, will you? What are you doing? Leaving. What was that going to achieve? It may have escaped your notice, but we have a 14-year-old boy living under our roof. So? Well, surely it's only a matter of time before I'm consumed by uncontrollable paedophile lust again. For heaven's sake. And while I'm at it, you'll find the phone number of the police in there. What? If you genuinely believe I have sexually abused our children, then phone the police and tell them. There's a hostel for the incurably perverted nearby. They'll find me there or hanging around the local primary school. Can't you just talk to me for five lousy minutes? What about? Even you couldn't top yesterday's performance. Well, at least stop and think before you walk out on us. What, you want me to stay? What, you'd be happy living with a, a nonce, as I'd be so quaintly known in strange ways? Please. Oh, so you want to talk? Oh, OK, then. So, um, when did you first suspect I'd interfered with the kids? Was it two, two months ago, two years, ten years? Or would it be about the same time you suspected our lovely children were making eyes at each other? Oh, no, no, sorry, I forgot. You only think you might have suspected. You didn't actually realise you did until you found out it was true. I'd get more sense out of Mystic Meg. Look. You don't really think that I'm capable of... <sighs> Hi, Mick. You all right? You're not on strike, are you? Hey, It's dead as a lawn, isn't it? You what? You must be going soft in your retirement room, letting them stall in whenever they feel like it. I don't. Delia Smith was meant to be behind that till over an hour ago. Yeah. Oh, all right, mate. I've just got to nip home and get my keys. <laughs> well, it looks like she's out spending your hard earned on posh nosh instead. Yeah, probably quail's eggs and caviar. Because they love that with a plate of chips out here, don't they? <laughs> I don't know who that Dixon scale thinks she is. I don't mind poor Jack out onto the streets. Mm, so, um, what's your poor Jack going to do, then? He hasn't got much choice, has he? I suppose he'll have to, um... Come and live with me. <gasps> Over the brush. <gasps> Julia Brogan. Hey, he's going straight into the spare room. No anky panky. Oh, you say that now, but he's a red blooded male. He may have uncontrollable urges. I'm keeping my hand on my apron until the wedding night. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some ironing to do. What are you huffing and puffing about? Oh, just nervous, you know, for Matthew this afternoon. Oh, come on, Max. Any game of hockey. Only? You've obviously never been an 11-year-old in a school team for the first time. Yeah, I'm usually. He's the goalie. Just hope he doesn't drop any clangers. Mm, if you can stop yourself turning into some sort of lunatic father from hell on the touchline, he'll be fine. So, um, I'm picking up Emily, yeah? Oh, yeah, if you would. I want to nip into Liverpool, do a bit of shopping first. Right. Susanna? Mm-hmm. Now, why do I always get that strange, sinking feeling when you say my name like that? I've been thinking. About? Well, it's about our decision to, um... Have you new shit? <laughs> Believe you me, that's not very funny. And? 
Right. Have you been thinking? Ah, right. Well, don't you think it's all a bit sexist? Sorry? Well, that it's you that has naturally assumed that it would be me going under the uh, surgeon's knife. Not particularly. I just thought we could have discussed the various options in greater depth before. And this would be purely on the grounds of political correctness. And nothing at all to do with total cowardice. I don't see why it should be me that has to undergo this operation. Face facts, Max, you're for the chop. Yeah. Tea up, kid. Ta, just leave it there. So, how's it feel? Getting your head down in the old gaff again, eh? Great. Like I've really moved on in my life. Ah, it's good to have you back. No place like home, eh? If you say so. Right, got a nice fry up on the go out there for you, kid. Oh, I. Scrambled eggs, best back, and a couple of them fancy Cumberland rings from the trading post. Jimmy Toast would have done me. Don't be soft. Now, look, do you want beans, tomatoes, or both? I'm not bothered. Come on, get a move on. What's the second half of supermarket sweep, eh? If you're sucking up to me so Jackie doesn't find out about the 1,200 quid you owe me, don't bother. Your secret's safe with me. Keep it down, will you? And I wasn't sucking up. Yeah. I think I'll give the full English a miss. Your loss. Morning. See you later. What's up with Roger the lodger? None. Yeah. Just thought you might have brought the subject to rent up with him. Yeah, I haven't had a chance yet. Well, don't you think you're better out? OK, I will. It's just a bit delicate. Delicate? Sinbad? Yeah, well, he's a mate, isn't he? Well, so he won't mind paying his way, will he? What are we charging him? Uh, I don't know, 25? 30? For bed, food and bills? Well, you can double that. But... But nothing, Jimmy. We agreed 60. Yeah, well, that's when we thought we could screw some travelling salesman or epoxy student out of a few bob, won't it? You get round there and you sort his house. And while you're at it, you buy a proper rent book. Don't want any of this. Slap you on the back. I'll give it you when I've got it rubbish either. Do you hear me? Hey. There you are, look. What is that? Dipos... Dip us, I can't even say the thing, never mind sell it. Have a faith for once in your life. Oh, I've got faith. Oh, yeah, in soup and crisps and cornflakes. Try and think of yourself as a man at the vanguard of the retail cuisine in the new millennium. Are you going to buy some, then? Oh, uh, no, just a packet of extra strong mints, please. Oh, hello. Well... If it isn't Fanny Craddock herself. Now, look, I know you've probably been out galloping with a couple of gourmets, but you were meant to open up an hour ago. Well, now you're out of here, can you shift this glorified spam off the counter and try and sell some proper grub? Bell? Even your matey is not interested. You all right? I'm sorry. Yeah, aren't we all? Well, if it's OK with the boss, um, I, I think we'd better get her home. Yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. Mm, come on. Uh, I was only skitting your salami, you know. So we're selling at Jimmy's, all right, then? Oh, yeah. It's a real home from home. Well, at least you know your way around, then. Oh, yeah. Could give guided tours. Now, that's where my ex bird stabbed there, fella. Oh, and that's where we stashed the corpse. Oh, look, I know it's not ideal, but... Yeah, well, what is in the wonderful life of a second-hand fridge salesman? You're not going to let me forget this for a long time, are you? Nah. <sighs> yeah. I don't know, Mick. It's just that... I never seem to put any roots down. Someone comes along with the weed killer. Yeah, I know, mate. I've been there. So, how's things in your bowl of cherries? Well, I'm about to get sweet with a bit of luck. Oh, yeah? And Elaine's Ma's gone in for the up tomorrow, so... Uh... So you'll have the place to yourselves. Oh, come on, Sin, it's not like that. No, not much. But the only thing me and Elaine are bothered about is getting Gladys back on her feet. Oh, yeah, but you won't miss her for a couple of days. they are all bits and twisted in your all days, aren't they? Yeah. Can I help you? Yeah. I was wondering if you'd had any young lads in, trying to get rid of gear on the cheap. You're joking, aren't you? There's normally a queue. Are you busy, then? Nah, just trying to track down a few household goods. Hmm. Been screwed, have you? By me little brother. 
What went missing? Sandwich toaster, couple of hair dryers, clock radio. Could lose hmm. Dead funny. Yeah, he was in here the other day, but I told him to sling his hoof. Glad to hear it. Is he into drugs, then? No, he's into being a toss pot. Don't suppose you know any other shops he might have tried? A couple, yeah. I've got a pen, write them down for you. If I get that sandwich toaster back, first thing in it's his head. But surely this counselling must be doing some good. Well, it's a complete oh. nightmare. We're going to need therapy to get over the therapy at this rate. Isn't it a chance to clear the air? Well, it's like the whole family's on trial. We're all in the dock, waiting to take the stand one by one. <sighs> Is that bad? Well, you have to sit there listening to the evidence. And then when it's your turn to testify, everybody's hanging on to each word so they can pull it to bits when it's their go. Oh, bad. And the worst thing of all is that I'm convinced that Ollie actually enjoys it. No. He revels in it. Or he did until the last session. Oh, uh, why? What? I don't think he's quite so keen on getting in touch with his inner self now. What happened? Oh, I don't know. Whatever was said, I'm... I just feel that the finger of blame is always pointing in my direction. And, and this mess isn't just down to me. I mean, what they've been doing isn't due to one single thing that I'm responsible for. And I'm just sick of Ollie implying that... Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I started pointing a few fingers myself. I just keep going through every scrap of the past looking for hints or signs. And, you know, we are told that these sessions are an exercise in emptying out whatever's in your head. And? And what came into my head was maybe Ollie had abused the children. Seriously? I mean, I don't have any evidence. You accused him of it. I don't know whether I really believe this or whether I'm lashing out at him or whether I'm just going quietly insane. Do you think you could possibly do that with a little less gusto? Try that, gentlemen. What do you think? Not bad. Yes, but would it catch your eye if you'd only came in for the tin of corned beef? Hmm. Yes, I think I'd certainly be tempted. Really? At one ninety a quarter? How much? Exactly. Oh, well, if it isn't, Ollie. Well, what another fine mess your wife has got me into. Sorry? The Italian job. Uh, um, is Belle not here? Eh, uh, doesn't look like it, does he? <laughs> oh, well, uh, you know when I'm passing the hat round town? Bankrupt-like. Uh, you won't forget to throw a few lira in, will you? Ollie, uh, sorry to bother you, but, um, I wouldn't mind asking your advice on a pretty tricky issue. <laughs> you sure you've got the right man? I know things haven't... I know things have been a bit awkward, but I, I really would value your opinion. Well, that gives you a head start on the rest of humanity. Problems? Nothing a lorry load of paracetamol couldn't solve. Oh, I see. Uh, things not too hot at home, eh? Well, I wouldn't want to burden you with it all. Now, what's this advice? <laughs> a nice one, eh? Can wait. No, 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 believe me. It would, uh, would make a pleasant change to talk to someone who actually wants to listen. I'm not joking about the paracetamol, are you? Who knows? Basically, I'm uh, at the end of my tether. You see, we had this stunning idea of a family therapy session. Yeah, it was a kind of a last throw of the dice to see if we could get to the bottom of this mess. I don't know what I was expecting. Some kind of cathartic road to Damascus job, I suppose. You know, a blinding light, uh, a few home truths, and, and then we could all get on with our lives. But, um, well, it hasn't quite worked out like that. And now the accusations and the recriminations have started flying. Which is why I'm stood here rambling to you like a manic depressive. <laughs> all part of the service, eh? Look, you don't fancy a... Lunchtime drink, do you? Oh, wish I could, but I've got things to do, and then I'm taking Matthew playing hockey. All right, fair enough. I tell you what, um, why don't you tag along? No. No, no, come on, more the merrier. Um, yeah, okay. 
I'd like that. What time? Great. Uh, give me an hour. Okay. Uh, are you heading off? No. I think I'll call another cafe, see if uh, a glass or two of House Red can make the world seem a brighter place. <laughs> It's not that much hassle, is it? What? I've got to carry a rent book round with me, sign it once a week, then track you down and get you to sign it, and then have it ready for your missus to inspect when she feels like it. Oh, I don't think it's exaggerating. And also's you, don't get your head stoved in with their rolling pin. Why can't you just help us out, eh? Hey, I thought you brought them sarnies round for me. Oh, sorry. Well, I don't suppose you've worked out how you're going to get the 50 quid a week yet, either, have you? Actually, yeah. Uh... She wants a bit more than that. You what? How much? Uh, 75. 75 pound a week? For a freezing garage in a crappy cul-de-sac? No, there's your food as well, isn't there, eh? And all the liquor you can burn off. Yeah, like a pair of sharks, you two. Sinister going rate, mate. 75 pound, the lower rate. Hang on, what am I talking about? I'm not paying it. <sighs> but you'll still... Fill in the rent book for us, won't you? Give us it. I'm getting lost and take your sarnies with you. That's it, run! Ah, oh, narrow the angle. That's it, good save, Matthew, good save. That's my boy, good save. Yeah, I'm impressed. Now, about this snip. Oh, yes, um, well, you see, the thing is, <laughs> Susanna, <laughs> we as a couple, uh, we've decided to take the plunge and, uh, well, I, I was just wondering if, if you had any experience in that area. Me? Emasculated, maybe. Vasectomized? No. Ah. But no man who is. Oh, really? Cut my fact. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now I suppose you're going to tell me that it's a perfectly painless procedure with no nasty side or after effects whatsoever. Uh, I wish I could. What? Well, there, uh, there can be a... Uh, a certain amount of bruising and swelling. How much? Well, one friend of mine said it was akin to um, limping around with a couple of very tender aubergines in his boxer shorts. But uh, I suppose he was laying on a bit thick. Oh, I'll get it. <laughs> Should we have a race? Go on. Boy. Hi. Hello. Mm. How's he doing? No, no. Made one good save already. Oh, where's Emily? Emily? Um, oh, yeah. She's gone off over there with uh, Ollie. What? Come along for the ride. There's nothing wrong, is there? There is if you've heard what I've just heard. So? What? Oh, don't tell me I haven't seen him. Oh, of course I've seen him. And? It's sorted. Well, where's the money, then? Jackie, he's only been here five minutes. What do you want me to do, pickpocket him? A week in advance, I said. Yeah, but he didn't have any cash on Well, why didn't he go the hole in the morning? Because he's got a thriving business to so run, hasn't he? So he should be flush, then, shouldn't he? Jackie, give him a chance, will you? Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, we've got all kinds of bills to no, pay. But stop worrying. Look, you'll get your money, OK? Yes, well, when I do, there's something else we need. Like what? A deposit. Hey? Well, he'll get it back when he leaves, as long as there's no breakages. A couple hundred quid will do. You what? Where am I going to get 200 quid from? From Simbad Soft Ollies. Oh. And quick. <sighs> oh, come on. I mean, she said herself she had no proof. Well, there wasn't any proof against the other Mr Simpson, was there? Well, he hardly seems the chap likely to... You know. Oh, I know. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? I reckon she's cracking up. Oh, that's exactly what Polly had wanted you to think. Oh, darling, spare me the global male conspiracy theory. Yes, get in! Yes. Well done, oh, man! Well One done. there! Brilliant. 
<laughs> yeah, well, it's the goalie who's kept us in it. Just speak up, Max. The chap in the far field didn't quite catch that. <laughs> Close game, eh? Yes. You enjoying yourself? No, oh, I've enjoyed the whole afternoon. It's been getting away from it all. It's, it's just been a real tonic. Thanks, Max. My pleasure. I don't know, it's sun-dried this, olive oil, like you think the eye ties had landed. Yeah, I know what you mean, mate. What happened to the great British shopkeeper, eh? Eh? Yeah. I'll tell you what happened to him. They're all either bankrupt or stuck behind the leg of ball down down the Asda. That's what happened. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Breaks my heart, I tell you. Yeah, well, what can you do, eh? Exactly, what can you do? You see, Sinbad, on one hand, you've got the past, haven't you? Eh? All the things you know, all the things you're used to, all the things you can trust. And on the other, you've got the future, but... Is it really the future, or just the past wrapped up in some foreign fancy name? Well, it beats me. Me and all. Uh, listen, non um, I've got a customer, mate. Look at you. Yeah. Thanks again, Max. Oh, my pleasure. Hey, maybe I can buy you that beer sometime? Yeah, sure. Hey, 2 nil. Not bad, eh? No, it was great. I'll have to come and see you in the semis. Really? Oh, we'll wait and see if you pick for the team first. Well, after that performance, it's a cert. <laughs> well, we'll see. Come on, you two, tea time. Come okay, on. I'll see you later. Bye. 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 Where have you been? Why? Well, I was worried about you. Oh, no need. I've just spent a very pleasant afternoon watching a horde of teenage boys building up a sweat. OK. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. I'll let you have it for 15. I mean, come on, I paid 12 for it myself. Oh, wait, don't you know a bargain when you see one? What was that? What the hell was that? So it's just done a brick through me window. Go away. Have you seen anything? No, no, nobody. I'm shaking like a leaf here. Yeah? Bleeding kids. Well, that just puts the top hat on it, doesn't it? Thanks, God. Thanks very much. How can comedy make a fool of death? Die laughing with the seriously funny Howard Jacobson. Next on four. I'll tell you what, I'll smuggle you in a bottle of tea, Amelia, tomorrow. You will not. Make it a Bailey's. Mom. I wonder what they make these new hips out of. Do you think they're plazzy? Not going to tell me, are they? I'm just a poor patient. Well, what do you want to know that for? Well, if they are plazzy and uh, she goes on the sunbed, they might melt. <laughs> Don't be soft. It's just a thought. <laughs> anyway, it's probably gold-plated or something, since I've gone private. Oh, don't start that again, Glad. Oh, I think we're ready for you now. <coughs> oh, good luck, Mum. Take care, Glad. Now, go on, get lost the pair of you. 
Hey, and don't be hanging around the waiting room all day either. Out now. <sighs> this is going to cost me a fortune, this lot. Yeah, well, claim on the insurance, can't you? Nah, they're another gang of robbers, aren't they? Me premium would double overnight. Well, at least you haven't got the vent on our place to worry about. Oh, ha ha. Jackie's been going on and on about it. Yeah, my heart bleeds. I don't know when I'm going to find 375 quid by Friday from. How much? She wants a deposit off you now. Her maiden name isn't Rachman, is it? Um, don't suppose there's uh, any chances there? None whatsoever. No. 300 quid deposit. What's up with it? I don't know. I wish I did. She hasn't been right for ages. Yeah, well, I suppose she's had a lot on her plate with little Jimmy and that, so. Yeah, but, you know, she just. Isn't my Jackie? Well, it takes time, mate. Mm. So, have you got a culprit for this then, or what? Too right, I have. That little runt who was in here the other week trying to fence me, who could hear. It's in it. What makes you think it's in, mate? Because his brother was in yesterday looking for a load of gear that your mate Tina had whizzed off him, and I put the finger on him. Yeah, that doesn't mean he bailed down and put you wind in it. Oh, think about it, Sherlock. When the brother gets proof, the kid gets a hiding, and Muggins here gets bricked. So, what are you going to do? Get the busies in. Nah, it's a waste of time, isn't it? Especially as I know where the little get lives. Well, they are. I'll save your shoe leather for you. Why? Well, I know him, don't I? I'll go round there, put him straight for you. You're joking, aren't you? That'd be like sending the Yorkshire Ripper in to get Fred West's confession. That's nice, isn't it, eh? Thanks very much. I was only trying to help. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can hold me coat, as I'll sort this out myself. So do I tell Bell to sling a hook or what? Well, it's all a matter of checks and balances, isn't it, Ron? I mean, on the one hand, you could say that you found a woman with sufficient drive and vision to take the trading post into the next millennium. And on the other, I could say that my shop is being run to the ground by a crank. Or alternatively, that you've got a manager there who's more than prepared to do all the donkey work while you sit back and enjoy the fruits of her labour. Yeah, but I could say that the crank is turning my shop into a ghost town. Mm. Well, I suppose the whole thing hinges on Belle's grand plan. What grand plan? Well, how she sees the trading post in five years' time. Well, how should I know? All she does is run around ordering box loads of anything that ends in an eye. Honestly, Bing, I couldn't tell you whether she wants the place full of ponces weighed down with arid bags or owl bags blowing a pension on pate fou gras. <laughs> I see. No, anyway, I've had me whack. Enough is enough. Ron Dixon's all about frozen peas and tin custard, so I am sticking with what I know, and Lady Muck will have to like it or lump it. Well, at least you made a firm, clear-cut decision. So will you come round with us when I have to tell her? Oh, hello, Smiler. Hiya. Didn't know you were booked in. Last-minute job, fancy treating myself. Oh, yeah, what's the occasion? I'm off out with the gang from last year's panto. Hey, are you on the turn or what? What? Oh, all this effort for a nice out with the ugly sisters. <laughs> Get lost. Anyway, Christian's gonna be there. Oh, I see. Well, he's kind of taking me, actually. Oh, only kind of taking you? Well, yeah, only his mates like. Oh, yeah, because you'd always get a full makeover just for your mates, don't you? <laughs> Oh, I've only been on an hour and I'm already knackered. Can't take the pace, eh? Oh, shut up, you. Seems you're getting on with that fella, all right. Oh, I didn't half fancy himself. Turning on, was he? Yeah, he wanted to know what I was doing when I got off work. Not that old one. Oh, man, but his breath reeked of garlic. Continental type, eh? <laughs> and he left a minty tempe tip. Oh, so he's given you the quid to have gone out with him. What sort of girl do you think I am? Don't know. Oh, thanks a lot, mate. So, um, in the words of our smooth talking gal and breath friend, what are you doing when you get off work? I'm not sure yet. Fancy going for a pizza? Mm. Go on, you don't make sense. I was just going to veg out from the telly all night. Great, treat you to a takeaway. Make it a Chinese in your own. What are you doing? You're his mate, aren't you? Give him a big smile, eh? All right. All right. Guess who? <gasps> Look at 
that. You rip your shirt, you fat man. Hey, I'll rip more than your shirt in a minute. It's simple, cool it, will ya? Look at the state of that. Oh, stop moaning. There's only one button come off. What's the score, anyway? I'll tell you what the score is. Your brick one, my shop window nil. What? Some kind soul put a brick through his shop window. Yeah, and since you were in trying to flog your brother's gear the other day... Grass. Oh, all right, that's it. Hey, all right, all right, all right. So we were just wondering if you knew anything about it. No, nothing. Oh, all oh, right. Oh, sorry, that's OK then, isn't it? Who are you trying to kid, eh? But he haven't done nothing. Come off it, lad. Traitor. Do you know something? If I wasn't here, he'd have put you through your front window. Oh, good idea, Jim. Hey! Hey, hey. Can I help you, lads? Fat man here was just about to throw me through the window. Button at you. So, we meet again? Yeah. What's the problem? Well, a couple of hours after our chat yesterday, my shop window gets a brick through it. It wasn't me. And I put two and two together and... Well? Honest, Ben, I didn't do it. And I thought you had more sense. You're not going to listen to all now, are you, are you? Inside, now. Is that it? No. If you did it, I'll find out. How? I just will, OK? I'll be in touch. Stuff to say. Um, it's me, Mum. Everything okay? I don't know. Um, they're bringing her back up to the ward. Really? Yeah, that's what I said. That's a bit quick. Wasn't the impression it's quite a long place. I don't know. Mum. Yeah. Oh, Mum, are you okay? Is that you, Kissy? No, Mum. It's me. It's Elaine. Do you think? Oh, I'd rather have Elvis any day of the week. On senile. See how ascetic, soft girl. Yeah, she's off her cake. <laughs> Come. Oh, they go easy on a you two. Hello, baby. Just doing my job. Thought she'd be all, you know, hooked up with drips and all sorts. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the expert. Uh, Excuse me, Doctor. Yeah. Elaine, Mrs. Charlton's daughter. I was wondering if you could fill us in on there. Oh, right, of course, yeah. Hi. Oh, hello, Doctor. Um, did everything go OK? Unfortunately not. There's been a slight hitch with regard to your mother's operation. What do you mean? I'm afraid we haven't been able to carry out the procedure. So she didn't get her new hip? Not yet. <laughs> but why? I'd rather discuss that when your mum's fully conscious, if you don't mind. Yeah, well, actually, I do mind. I am a daughter. I realise that. But as Mrs Charlton's doctor, I have to respect her rights as a patient, and she should be first to hear of the situation. What situation? Believe me, there's no immediate cause for alarm. Please, bear with me, and I'll be back as soon as she's compass mentis. <sighs> Hi. Afternoon. Perfect timing. What do you think? Um, well, it's uh, very creative. Yeah, yeah, very uh, creative. Listen, Belle. Ah, oh, if it's about yesterday, I promise there will not be a repeat performance. Yeah, well, I'm not really... You see, I'd had this row with Ollie and I really let it get to me. Oh, could happen to any of us. Yeah, well, it's not about that. It's... Well, it's about all this. Are you still worried about Jackie cancelling the order? Well, amongst other things, obviously, yes, it's... Not every day your own daughter stitches you up like a kipper, is it? No, but, um, I have been projecting a few figures and I'm convinced we can get back on course. Yeah, well, the thing is, you see, I'm not... Ah, Ollie. <laughs> Popped in to sample your good lady's continental fare. I just need a pint of milk, thanks. So, uh, what do you think of all this gear, then? I really don't think anyone would be that interested in what I think. 44, please. What time do you want tea tonight? Well, Dan is going to computer club after school, so seven-ish. Fine. Bye. Oh, dear. Things still a little frosty on the home front, are they? <laughs> Positively arctic. Yeah, well, I'm very sorry about that, Belle, but... Uh, oh, yes, yes, um, uh, as you were saying, Ron. Look, I don't really see where all your customers are going to come from. Oh, far and wide. 
Well, uh, if you could be a touch more specific, Ron might begin to feel more reassured. Uh, specific, say, in terms of target market? Uh, yes, yes, target market and uh, that sort of thing, yeah. Hmm. And you, of course, are an expert on research into the retail trade. No, but look, I... Look, forget all that. I'm not bothered about that. The only thing I'm worried about is what you think you're doing with my shop. I am dragging it by its bootstraps out of the dark ages. The days of open all hours are gone. You've only got to look at the cafe bar down the road for that. People want their own little taste of Europe. Yeah, but where do we fit into all that? In a year's time, I want to see the word delicatessen over your front door. And uh, what do you get out of this? Well, I learn the trade, I open my own shop, and I leave Ron with a thriving concern. Oh, I see. So Ron's just a guinea pig in all this, is he? No! I'll make you a fortune. What? Out of a bunch of four-wheeled skids queuing up to buy kosher Kit Kats? Get your head down. Listen, Belle, let's get one thing straight, shall we? I like the Dark Ages. Now, I know you're a good worker, so the job's still here for you. But in future, we do things my way. What are you doing? Which means normal service will be resumed as soon as possible. Hello, you two. Hi, you Mum. Oh, I'm gasping for a drink of water. I'll give you an ice cube in a minute. Ah. So, how's my new hip looking? Done a good job here, mate. Yeah, I should think so and all for 350 necker. How much? Jeez. Aye, aye. All right. Yeah, I will be. Want to get someone to pay for this? You already have. Hasn't he? Yeah. It was me. And? I'm sorry. What's up with you? Hey. Anyway, send the bill and I'll bung you a check. Cheers. Up to you whether you want the busies in on it. Nah. But next time. There won't be a next time, will there? No, there won't. I think we can safely say he's learned this lesson. Yeah, well, uh, anyway, here's the damage. It's, uh... It's gonna be a long while before you clear this step, lad. Come, Ed. <laughs> Nothing, he's just been daft. Oh. Your phone? Yeah, in a bit. I'm speaking to a Chinese first. Oh, really? Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, thank God for that. I thought you were going to ask me to come in tonight and work for you something. Mm, no. Because I'm absolutely knackered. Oh, you'll be sound after the sweet and sour. Come ahead. Okay. Oh, if you see Katie, will you make sure she doesn't do any tea for me? See ya. Yeah, see ya. more to this than you're cracking on. Honest to God, Mum. You know what I know. All I know is I came in for a new hit, but I'm still stuck with the old one. Let's see what the quack has to say, eh? Excellent advice. How are you feeling? No better than when I arrived. I take it you filled your mum in on the op then? Oh, lack of it, yeah? I must say I'm very disappointed, Doctor. I know. There's nothing worse than psyching yourself up for a big event that doesn't happen. What went wrong? Nothing to worry about at this stage. Just a minor complication. What, like? If you never get a word in edgeway, she'll tell you. Well, we opened you up as planned, but when I had a closer look at the hip, it left me with a couple of questions that I'd rather have answered before going through with surgery. What kind of questions? Will you hold your horses for five seconds? Go on, Doctor. We've taken a bone sample and had it sent for a biopsy. A biopsy? Why? What did you think she's got? Well, if they knew that, they wouldn't have to do the tests, would they? Yeah, but... Will you let the woman finish? Now, all things being equal, once the results are in, we should be able to proceed. But in the meantime, lie back and enjoy the rest. 
and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, Doctor. finished for the day. Well, Rice just found us and there's no answer. Really? Mm -hmm. Thought maybe he was getting changed here and then going straight from where. What, and he hasn't rang? No. Listen, Katie, I don't think he's going to be able to make it tonight. Why not? Well, him and Rachel have gone for the Chinese. Get lost. No, honest. But, well, maybe he's got to stay strong. I've been looking forward to this all week. Yeah, well, you can still go, see all your old mates. No, I can't. Why not? Just because he's let you down. Look, I don't want to go now, all right? Where are you going now? Excuse me? How long can you keep this up? Who knows? I think we should try and sort this out. Why? You've said your piece. The kids know exactly what you think I am. Sounds pretty sordid to me. I think we've all said our piece over the last few weeks. But none of us with quite your inimitable style. <sighs> I've been on the receiving end of more than my fair share of accusations. Oh, vis-a-vis -vis your spot of extramarital activity. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, dear. But that particular allegation happened to be true. Oh, go on, wheel out the old war horse. You're beginning to sound like a crack record. Well, in that case, I'll take myself out of your earshot. Right, knives and forks. All right, haven't you got any chopsticks? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. You look nice. Ciao. Come on, then. Hey, you're all right. No, not really. What's up? Oh, nothing. Just some lad promised to take me out tonight and then went out with my mate instead. Hey. Oh, no. And then, just to rub my nose in it, comes back to my house for a slice smooch. Oh, Casey, what are you on about? It's a pancho reunion tonight, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I completely forgot. Yeah, well, I can see that. How are they all, anyway? How do I know? I never went. Why not? Because you were meant to be taking me. I'm gone. I don't mean to be going to that do together, like, but... It's the same thing, isn't it? No, it's not, actually. Well, what's it matter, anyway? You stood me up for Rachel, so I know the score. Are you two saying that you've seen each other? Us two aren't anything. Look, I'm sorry I let you down, but we were going to that do as mates. And are you just mates with Rachel? Well, that's up to her, isn't it? Look, I don't want to cause any hassle. I'll get off. You have to scram. Are you sure? Yeah, see you in work tomorrow. OK. See you, Katie. See you. Katie, look, don't say anything. It's not your fault I've just crammed myself the biggest knobhead in history, is it? Danny will be home soon. So? Well, he's going to want to know what's going on. Well, I'm sure you can feed him an appropriately elaborate lie. Look, can we please try and talk this through? <laughs> your idea of talking things through is shouting an opinion at the top of your voice and then flouncing off like Violet Elizabeth Bott. OK, OK, so we've established I'm not very good at family therapy. At last, some common ground. Well, I thought the whole point of the therapy was to try and get things off our chests. Well, you certainly did that. Look, I said what I said because... because it was in my head, because it was running through my mind. Not necessarily because I believed that it was true. Sounded like you believed it to me. I believe that something has happened to our children, that it can't just be down to a freak of nature. I... I want to know the reason why. And you think I know the reason why? No. I don't know. Do you think I abuse them? 
I believe that somebody has done something to my children, yes. But not me. No. Well, who then? I don't know. I've been through the whole list. Uncles, aunts, teachers, even your dad. My dad? Well, who was close to them as children? My father? Well, he used to take them on holiday. He was always available for babysitting, and all this did happen. That's <laughs> enough! That really is enough. So I'll be in tomorrow dinner, all right? OK, love. And don't be flapping. There's bound to be a few hiccups with this kind of thing once you're as decrepit as I am. Yeah, I know. Mm. It's just general wear and tear. Exactly. You take care, Glad. Mm. Right, nice. See you. A biopsy. You know what that means. Hey, just doing a test, that's all. Yeah, but... Come on, let's just wait and see, eh? <gasps> but what if she's got... Hey, 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 hey. I don't know anything yet. Come on. Let's go on. Please, Ollie. Get off me, you hey, twisted. please. You can spout any lies you like about me, but nobody is going to do that to the memory of my father. Jungle buster Pete McCarthy gets eyed up by vultures and has some invaluable tips for warding off killer bees. Travelog is in Costa Rica, next on 4. Dog with a bone? Yes, a very skinned dog. I will now. When? In a minute. All right, that's it. What are you doing? I sauce it myself. Jackie, just leave it to me, will you? Well, go on then. Do you know something? I think that HR Tiki has addled your brain. Do you know that? Don't talk soft, Jimmy. Jackie, I'm being serious. If this is the way it affects you. No, this is how wondering where the next penny's coming from affects me. Yeah, well, you just don't seem right to me. Oh, well, let's be honest, Jimmy. I haven't been right for a long time. Them poxy patches don't help, do they? Hey? You want to bin them and get yourself off to the quacks? Yes, well, I am. I'm seeing the doctor, the savvy, if you must know. Good. I should think so, too. <sighs> do you know, if I'd had any idea the change was going to make me feel like this, I'd have told him to shoot me when I was 40. Oh, come on, Jackie. You OK, hon? Yeah. Mm. I can see I'm going to have to pinch your lippy and paint a smile on your face, aren't I? Sorry. Hey, come on. Think positively, your mum will be. Listen, for all we know, this test will be spot on. In a couple of days' time, she'll be hobbling round on her new hip. Do you think so? Yes. Listen. <sighs> it's going to take more than a cock-up like this to knock our glad out of a stride. I hope so. Yeah. And, uh, seeing as it's my birthday next week, when she does come home, throw a big party for the pair of us. Oh, that would be lovely. Mm. Do you ever do it? Is your mother in? Who's making all that noise? 
Oh, don't worry. It's only your boss. It's Mr Dixon. I think she's managed to work that one out for herself. Coming! <clears throat> Morning. Ah, I'm not disturbing you, am I? No, no, not at all. Oh, good. It's only that I just happened to call around to the shop. You know the one that me livelihood depends on, mm -hmm. like, and, uh, well, I couldn't help but notice it was shut. Ah, me too. Hey. Well, I called around there earlier to start my shift and the whole place was locked up. Ah, well, you see, that's generally what happens when you finish for the night. Otherwise, people have a tendency to help themselves. Ah, uh, what are you getting at, Ron? Well, don't come the innocent with me. Why haven't you opened up the shop? Ah, oh, well, you see, handling of keys and the security of the shop are management duties. You what? Well, they involve decision-making and responsibility, and since you've made it clear that those are the areas in which I'm no longer involved... Oh, come on, don't be daft. I'm not. You want a shop girl? You've got a shop girl. All right, all right, we'll play it your way. Get your coat on. I want you behind that till in five minutes flat. I'm sorry. I'm taking the day off today. Since when? Well, you see, I've been adding up the number of hours I've been doing in the shop recently, and I'm sure that they contravene some EU employment law or other. But what am I meant to do? Cassie isn't in until after dinner. Mm, make an executive decision. See you tomorrow, Ron. What did he want? Oh, nothing in particular. I made you some toast. Oh, thanks. Is Dad not back yet? No. Well, has he not wrong? I expect he hasn't had the chance. Who did you say he went out with again? Um, I didn't quite catch his name. Some trendy lefty from college. Hasn't seen him for years, apparently. Oh. He's probably just woken up in some sleeping bag. And a hangover. Listening to Bob Dylan albums. Mum? Yeah. Is he having an affair with someone? God, no. Is that what you think? Yeah. Oh, come here. Look, he's out with an old friend, that's all. There's nothing to worry about. Everything's fine. I promise. Now, the key to goalkeeping in any sport is concentration. Your team could be on the attack virtually the whole game. Good save. So, when the opposition attack, You've got to be ready. Have you got that? Yes, Dad. Uh -huh. Morning, all. Hiya. Oh, doesn't he look handsome in his uniform? <laughs> He's only in the semi-finals of the hockey next week. Oh, isn't that marvellous? <laughs> oh. Three fifty. A fiver. Oh, come on, Michael. Three seventy-five. That's reasonable. A fiver. I'll make you four quid. That's my final offer. Bleeding brain surgeons don't get five pound an hour. Take it or leave it. I could swing for that bell. It's got a good title for your life story, though. What's that? The minge bag and Mrs. Simpson. Very funny. <laughs> Here. I'll be round when I get back from the old sailors. Gotcha. And if anybody comes yeah, in asking for salami. Yeah, yeah, I know. Just point them to oh, the main port. Good stuff. And again, right? You ready? Oh, very good. Well done. Hi, hi. It's R2 D2. Ha uh ha. What's with the Cybernaut outfit? He's the goalkeeper for the school hockey team, aren't you, son? Oh, jolly hockey sticks, is it now? What happened to Footy all of a sudden? Nothing. Hey, Matt, I thought you were a good Evertonian. I am. They are. That's terrible, that is. Pushing the kid into playing some puffs game. It's not. It's nothing like that. Well, I hope you're not going to let him out round here with all that gear on. You get robbed soft. You ready? Max! What? Charming! Sorry. Quick word. Oh, Matthew, work on your ball control. <laughs> How are <up. laughs> <laughs> Ah, right. I get it. Uh, snip talk. So I've been mulling over, you know, what you were saying the other day, you know, about looking at all the options. Really? Mm. And I've come to the conclusion that it's only fair to give you a choice in the matter. Well, I'm, I'm shocked. So would you like a Tuesday or a Thursday? Sorry? Well, I gave the clinic a call and <laughs> believe it or not, they've got two free slots, so you can take your pick, Tuesday or Thursday. I'm sorry to bring this up, but well, you know what Jimmy's like. Certainly do. We'd still be humming an R and about it this time next year, wouldn't we? Hmm. 
So we did pass in the Renfrew then. Yeah, he yep. Never leaves my side. And he mentioned what we thought was fair. Yeah, 75 quid. Hey? And cheaper twice the price. 60. You are? 60 pounds. That's not what he told me. Isn't it now? Did he mention a deposit? Yeah, he did, and, well, to be honest, Jack, I mean, I don't think there's £300 worth of gear to break in that extension. 200 <sighs> Figures. I think we've been at. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, at least we're straight now, aren't we? Yeah. Um. so, um, how would you feel about a week in advance? Yeah, whatever. Oh, great. Well, I'd say that's 320 quid then, please. You what? May as well start the way we mean to go on. Well, the thing is, Jack, I was going to pay Jimmy later. Well, why pay the clown when you got the ringmaster? <sighs> Look, Jack, I'm sorry. The thing is, Senna, I wouldn't ask you if I didn't really need it, love. I've got bills coming out of ears. Fair dues. Big smiles. Hey, can you stop trying to cheer me up? I'll be okay. Hiya, Mum. Hello, love. Oh. Right, Dad. Any news? Yeah, I've got a number, but I'm bored really. Oh. No, off the specialist. Oh, I saw her this morning. She said she might have the results later today. Was that it? Well, she didn't have time to look at the knitting patterns in the woman's own. I think it's terrible the way they're keeping you hanging on. It's only been a day. What presses me off is I swallowed every principle I had paying to jump the queue off a boss. To get better. Mm. I'd have been better waiting my turn like everyone else. Look, if you'd gone with the NHS, you'd still be hanging on for an up in 12 months' time. So? Well, think about it, Glad. God forbid if something does show up on these tests. Whatever happened to positive thinking? No, all I'm saying, if there was, you know... Go on, say it. Well, if there was some kind of bad news, aren't you better off finding out now than 12 months down the line? Cheery soul, isn't he? Oh, you know what I mean, don't you, Glad? Mm. I still wish I'd stuck to my guns. Believe you, Jimmy. Uh, I lend you all kinds of money, and this is the thanks I get. Yeah, I was desperate. Yeah, well, there's desperate, and then there's robbing your mates. Okay, all right, all right. I'm sorry. No, stick your apologies. I want me money now. What all of it? No, dickhead. Just the money that I had to give to your missus. Sin, I haven't got it. You know I haven't. Well, what about your wages? I've just knocked it, mix. There was no answer. Right. Well, I'm going to have to go and get it back off here, then, aren't I? Hang on. You can't do that. Why not? Because you'll find out about the twelve. Will it? No, hang on. No, sorry. No, the one thousand five hundred and twenty pounds you now owe me. Sin, look, you will get your money. Death, I want my money back Monday, or else. It's all right, cool it will, yeah? Possibly wondering what's going on here, yeah? Cool. And hey, don't think I'm willing to put up with that palaver with the rent book every week either, because I'm not. Hang on a minute, mate. Oh, what's up? Have you won 25 grand on the Reader's Digest raffle, have you? No, it's from the coroner. Oh. Wants us to go in and say about our Jimmy. Well, is it, um, is it good news? I better go and get Jackie. Yeah, whatever. I'll uh, see you later. Oh, well, it's you. It's for a horrible moment there. I thought you were a customer. Oh, quiet, is it? Yeah, yeah. Smell of Gorgon's all must be putting everyone off. Ha ha. So, Ron's left you holding the fort, has he? Yeah, but it's going to cost him. Good, I'm very glad to hear it. Yeah, no, I found him up, you know. Well, that wasn't the intention. I just wanted to make this place work. Yeah, I'm banging your head against a brick wall there, aren't you? So, you don't think he's ready to be dragged out of the Dark Ages? As soon as you mentioned the word delicatessen, he thought he was going to be overrun by foreigners. Oh, dear. And all that effort. Yeah, he just hasn't got your bottle of imagination, has he? Thanks. Listen, don't thank me. Do us a favour, right? Think of something witty to put on your Mother's Day card. I wouldn't have thought you needed a ghostwriter. Ron never stops rambling on about my son, the scribe. Doesn't he? No. So, have you got any ideas? Um, simplicity and sincerity. She can hear all the wisecracks she wants the rest of the year. So that's what you go for, then? Yeah, definitely. Not that I expect to be inundated myself this year. Hey? 
Oh, nothing. Keep up the good work. See ya. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. I'm not here. I'm looking for my diary. Bedside cabinet. Ah, oh, so it is. I've just put it there now. It was lying under the bed with all them vasectomy leaflets. Oh. I hope you don't mind me saying so, but I think you're a very brave man. Actually, I'd rather not, um... It must have been a very big decision for you. Well... And I suppose you've heard all the other stories. One or two. Dolly Sparrow's fella, he had just done years ago before men bothered much like. Well, he had to. They had 12 children. And she couldn't get her in. Her tubes done because of complications. So, well, oh, do you know, I can still see the expression on his face this day when they brought him back home from the hospital. Oh, it made me blood run cold. Well, I'm sure that medical science has moved on a fair bit since then. Mm -hmm. I don't know so much, really. Thanks, Julia. Oh, hey, that's a bad sign for a start. You got the results, Doc? Yes, I have. Oh, thank God for that. So do I get my new hip now, what? No, I'm sorry. At the moment, you don't. But why not? The results of the tests weren't what we'd hoped for. Meaning? I'm afraid we think you may have cancer. Oh, oh no. When you say think... We're fairly certain. Oh, Mum. In my bones. Yes, secondaries of the bone. And by that, I mean that the cancer has spread to your bones from elsewhere. Well, can it be treated? Well, all cancers can be treated some way or another. It doesn't mean can you pump me so full of drugs I don't notice I've died. He wants to know if you can cure it. Until further tests are done, to establish the extent of the condition, that is difficult for me to say. <laughs> but surely there's, uh, there's, there's chemotherapy, uh, radiology, there must be loads of things. I just want to see me baldy. <gasps> now, I've arranged for an excellent specialist to come and see you. Once he's had a good look at the facts, he'll be able to give you a much fuller picture than I can of the kind of treatment that's available. Thanks, Doctor. In the meantime, well, I'm always here, if any of you need me. Thanks, Doc. Oh, Mum! Everything I said just seemed to make things worse. What happened? I don't know. Just when I thought I finally got through, I said the wrong thing and the whole thing just blew up in my face. And then he left? Yeah. Packed a bag and disappeared. What, any idea where he's gone? Not a clue. Do you think he'll be back? I don't know. I don't know if he thinks he's got anything to come back for. Daniel? Daniel! Daniel! How's he get on? All right. Where's Jackie? I'll just drop it off at the doctor's. So what did they say? They were very nice. Coroner made us a brew. Had a little plate of custard creams on the go. What about little Jimmy? Ah, seems like the busies have finally lost interest. So, as soon as the inquest's finished, we can bring him home. Well, when will I be? 
Next week, hopefully. Oh, good. Yeah. So, um, how do you feel? Oh, I don't know. Weird. It's like, oh, now the battle's over. It's finally sinking in, he really is dead. You're getting him back, that's the main thing. And hey, um, the letter that Cassie sent to the Echo was to give him a kick up the Jacksy, eh? Maybe. Just hope it helps my Jackie. It's got to, mate. At least we can give him a proper send off now, eh? How have you been feeling? Oh, you know, lousy. Any particular symptoms? Have you got an hour? My surgery's rather busy this afternoon. Oh, it's only joke. Oh, which is one of my symptoms? I'm sorry? Well, my sense of humour's gone west, you know, along with my patience and, and my appetite and. Sex drive. Oh, I see. I even borrowed some of them HRT patches, you know, from a maple. They were useless. You really should consult me before using prescribed medication. I'm sorry. Never mind. Look, we'll have a look at you. See if we can't get to the bottom of this. Will you tell Cassie and anyone else you think should know? Yeah. I'm not being funny, but I can't face explaining it over and over to a procession of sympathetic gulps. Anything else I need doing? Plenty. I'll knock you up a list if that's all right. Yeah, OK. Just give us a shout. Oh, for God's sake. How can you two sit here talking about lists? I'll have less of your lip, thank you. I'm sorry. Would you rather I killed over and croaked? Oh, please don't say that. Look, love. If it's any consolation to you, I'm scared stiff and all. I don't know what's eating away at me. But I can't just give up, can I? What is it they say? Mind over matter. Well, that's me. If you don't start off believing you can beat something, you've got no chance, have you? No. So we'll fight it, eh? The lot of us, together. <sighs> Disappointed. What? Hoping it was Dad. No, I'm glad that you're back safe and sound. So why didn't you tell me? I'm not I a little kid anymore, you know. I know. I just thought that he'd be back before you realised. Just like you thought Nat and George would be back to normal before I realised. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Except I already knew. Because I've got eyes and ears and a brain. I'm sorry. So why did Dad leave then? We had a row. About what? Everything. About me? No, of course not. Well, it wasn't about everything then, was it? Yes, but you know what I mean. Yes, of course I do. So don't lump me in with my weirdo brother and sister. I wasn't. I suppose you were lying about him staying with an old friend as well, weren't you? Yes, I don't know where he is. So do you think he'll come back? I wish I knew. So does this mean you're getting a divorce then? No, Daniel, stop it. Stop what? I haven't slept with my sister, and I haven't lied to my son, and I haven't abandoned my family. I'm just Danny the Divvy in the corner! Hi, right, Jack. You all right? Jackie? You all right there? Yeah, yeah, it's just been a bit of a day, that's all. Why was the matter? We're getting our little Jimmy back. Oh, good. Yeah, it is. Nice to say goodbye to him properly. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. You sure you're OK? You look a bit peaky to me. I've just been to the doctors. That's what she said. Why are you not well? Not exactly. Listen, I'll have to get back to her. Hey, 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 hey. Let them wait, will you? Come and have a quick brew before you clock on. No time. Are you sure you should be working anyway in your condition? In my condition. Hey. I need all the cash I can get. Hey, 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 hey. Watch yourself. A bit late for that. Jack, if there's anything wrong, love, you can tell me, you know. Can I? Of course you can, you know that. thing is, Ron, I'm pregnant. Annie is taking Caroline by the hand and leading her into the jungle that is the land of men. Watch out, they're on the hunt next. <laughs>